Okay, and it looks like we are live. Um, apologies uh, for any little issues here. If you can give me a thumbs up in the chat and let me know if vocals are coming through because this is all brand new and everything for me today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Brian and I am the executive producer who hides behind the scenes as much as possible when, uh, when Richard is doing the show. Unfortunately, Richard couldn't make it tonight due to a personal family emergency, so... Uh, you know, everyone uh, give them some love on Facebook. You can check us out at facebook.com slash groups slash the first layer. And tonight is just going to be uh, going to be good. Uh, we're going to play uh, we're going to play with some Fusion 360, answer your questions, because I didn't have any material prep for tonight. So uh, <laughs> especially if you have Fusion 360 questions, go ahead and ask. But otherwise, I'd like to give you a crash course. Uh, I'm going to say hello to a few people here. Uh, my chat is hidden right behind my webcam right now, so I'm just going to squeeze that in there, and hopefully I can see you guys a little bit better. Uh, we got one bad marine, audio uh, Aaron Hall, sorry, and 3D Medic Vince. How's it going, guys? Hopefully you're having a good, fun Saturday night. I know I am so far. Um, uh, Ron, he basically just had a family emergency he had to address, so unfortunately he wasn't able to make it. I'm hoping he'll be back in good spirits soon, but... If there are some delays in the videos, that's one of the contributing factors there. Um, a special hello to Ron, by the way, <laughs> Glenn Jones. Um, so, for those of you who haven't played with Fusion 360, um, it's basically Autodesk's free lower tier from SolidWorks product. And for what it's worth, it's you know great for makers, especially since they don't charge as long as you're not making. I think if the threshold is ten thousand dollars a year i could be completely wrong but um either way i haven't made any money off it yet so no concerns there so what i'd like to show you guys today is just kind of a crash course in starting a 2d sketch playing around with it um, at any point if you throw up questions in the chat i will do my best to capture them on the side and as i said this will be all impromptu tonight so uh, if you've never opened up fusion 360 you're gonna be prompted with this nice blanket empty space don't you love that i know i do but i like to put things on there so when you're designing um at least my methodology involves my favorite tool a digital caliper and just measuring stuff and learning how to draw it in so the first thing we want to think about with fusion 360 is that we're going to take a 2d object and then we're going to make it 3d so to start off with up on your toolbar at the top, you've got this nice little thing called Create Sketch, and that's exactly what it is. It's a sketch. So if for all you art fans or the people who like to doodle all day, we're gonna create some doodles. So let's create a new sketch. Right away, we're gonna get these three boxes and a whole bunch of messy stuff if you move the mouse around a lot. So what you're seeing here is your X, Y, and Z coordinates. So the best way to describe it is if you're looking at the front of your printer, you're going to have the left going across, which is your X. You're going to have your Y, which goes from front to back. And, you know, that's obviously backwards from how you're seeing it on my camera, but so bear with me. And then your Z is going to be your up and down. So usually I'm going to be drawing something on the X and Y plane, which is the bottom square highlighted. Oh, it looks looks like it's in blue on your screen on mine it's not so blue <laughs> so we're gonna click on that and it's gonna spin around and orient in the upper corner to be at top so we're looking top down on the top of your print bed next we want to say what do we want to draw uh, by default fusion 360 gives you a couple of basic tools to make it a lot easier we have the line and we have a two-point rectangle those are not the only tools, don't worry. But they're easy access and I find these are the best ones to work with. So if we click on the rectangle tool, it's gonna give us a little mouse cursor of where to point our first point. So if we click, I like to start honestly at the origin regardless, unless there's something I'm looking at designed very perpendicular. For now, we'll just start at the origin. You click once and then as you move your mouse out, you're gonna be provided with a changing field as you move the mouse up and down. This is going to show you measurements in millimeters. Now, if you want to design an imperial, there's a way to do it. I'm sorry, us Canucks here, we like to 
measure in metric, but there is a way to do it imperial if you really want. Um, now, a lot of people will think, okay, I can click this, and then I have to try and zoom in and out with the scroll wheel to try and get the exact coordinates. That's not necessary. If you've done your measurements, especially if you've worked with an engineering drawing, you can see one of the text fields by default is highlighted in blue, and that field is the one we can enter in. So let's start off and make a 20 millimeter tall uh, square. Now, if I hit enter, it'll do some fun stuff, but let's say I want to start with 20, 20 millimeters and maybe adjust that square slash rectangle. So if we hit the tab key, you'll see there's now a little lock icon directly beside the 20 millimeter mark. Now that means I can try and move my mouse up and down and apart from flipping on the bottom axis up and down, we can still adjust the uh, Y in this case to whatever we want. Now if we want it to be a fixed size, we can hit 20 and hit tab again and you'll see now they are both locked. Now we can actually choose which direction from that origin we want that to be. So my personal preference, I always like to go to the upper right. I like things to be positive. So click that and then we have this nice little square. Now what's cool is you'll see that the square is a little bit darker uh, on the inside. Now what does that mean? That means that it's closed and you can extrude anything from that. If it doesn't have any coloring in the center there, then it's not a closed object. So the next thing we want to do, because you know squares aren't that fun, let's, you know, otherwise we could just build a 20 mil calibration cube in a matter of a few minutes. Let's go and add a circle within this inside of it. So click down on the sketch, and now you're gonna see you have a boatload of tools. And I'll tell you, back when I was in school in the early 2000s taking SolidWorks, <laughs> you spent a lot of money to get these features. So let's take a look at what kind of circles we have. We have a center diameter circle, which you'll notice a C over here, that's a default hotkey. Most people are gonna start with a center diameter circle. There are applications where you sometimes wanna use that one, and there's applications where you wanna sometimes use the others. So we're gonna start off with a center diameter circle. Let's click that tool, and let's take a look down at our square. And as we move around, you can see I'm locking to grid, but there are other features within this tool set, such as if you move over the center of this line and you see a triangle, you're gonna be doing the cross-reference point. Uh, Tag Daddy 56, this is indeed free software. You can get it at, uh, let, me, let me grab a link for you guys. Hang on one moment. Fusion 360, it's just a quick Google away for you. Now you, what you wanna do is you do wanna download it as a trial and sign up and after, at the end of the 30 days, it flips over to what it calls this startup license. So head over to the link I'm posting into the chat and uh, you know, play with it. Let, let me know what you guys think. I personally, I got SolidWorks free this year as well and I'm still using Fusion 360 because it's more than sufficient. All right, so let's go and take our circle and we're gonna to wanna to dead center it on this square. Now, I'm, you know, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can actually see the dotted line that shows that it's going center, uh, 90 degrees offset from the two center points, so it should be center. When we click, immediately it's gonna give us a circle control. Now, something to bear in mind, okay? That uh, This tool, if I go up here and mouse over top of the circle, it says, center diameter circle. Diameter means wall to wall on the outside, not center to the outside, which would be a radius. So when you're doing your calculations and you're measuring a hole, uh, if you measure from the furthest distances out from the center of the circle, that's going to be your diameter. But if you measure from the center of the circle to the outside, you're going to have to double that number to get the right measurement in here. So we're going to drop that circle right on there. And now you can see we've got a circle within a square. There you go, there's, there's your trigonometry for the day. So, now, I think this is a good starting point to take this 2D drawing and bring it out into the 3D realm. But actually, let's throw in one more thing just to throw it off. Let's add some text in here 
And tonight it's going to be the first, if I can spell, the first layer, okay? So this thing here is way out there, it's giant. You can choose the text height. Honestly, it's not the most powerful text tool I've used, but it does give you some cool features such as you can select out of your plethora of Windows fonts, something you might like. Let's, let's go with this ugly font. And you can make it bold, you can make it italicized, whatever you'd like. But let's say we just want a hideous extrusion from this. Uh, Tag Daddy 56, you can create an STL from that. And I'm hoping by the end of this, I can help you show you how easy it is actually to export that STL file. You can put it right into Kira afterwards. Uh, no scaling necessary. And as long as you've basically built your geometry correct, you will be able to print it right away as I, I wish I had some fun things. I didn't bring any of them in tonight, but we will throw this maybe on a printer uh, and hopefully it'll be done quickly. So let's put in this ugly text. You can flip it around a couple ways. Uh, let's, let's just leave it with this hideous thing. How about that? Okay, so now we've got some text. We've got all these closed objects and we are good to go. So let's go into the upper corner here and you'll see the button stop sketch. So we'll stop that and we will remain right now in overhead view. Personally, I like to go and look back and see how we were oriented. So if you go over to this cube in the upper corner, this is a cool little object, by the way, you can click on this and drag it and it will pivot around the origin of whatever object you had selected. So we can go and spin around and look in all these different directions and, and all that. And then if you ever get it really, really mixed up like I do often, you can click on the home in the upper corner and it'll pop off to a view and it'll frame everything in nicely in almost an isographic sort of angle. So we've got some 2D objects. You can't print 2D objects though, right? We want some 3D stuff. So what we want to do is we're going to go up to this create menu and you've got a whole bunch of tools. Again, this stuff, I was surprised none of this ever existed like 10 years ago to the consumers. But now, hey, it's all free. So we're, we're not even gonna cover half of these tonight, but the big one I wanna show you off the bat is the extrude. Extrude sounds exactly, uh, does exactly what it sounds like. It goes and extrudes something out of the ground. Your printer extrudes 2D layers. So we're gonna click extrude. Now this little dialog box is gonna pop up and we're gonna, we need to select some profiles, okay? So if you select one, it'll just give you one object. If you hold down shift, you can select multiple objects to extrude. Uh, Tag Daddy, yes, you can fillet and chamfer, or fill it, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about food tonight, cause you know, I'd love to fillet my prints. Um, yeah, we'll get to that actually in just a couple of minutes here. So let's say we just want to extrude the outer frame of this circle. So we can go and click and drag on the arrow and go up and down. And this will go and build, extrude a model out of our 2D drawing. So this is, you know, just alone that feature was something that took, you know, years <laughs> years for us to learn in SOLIDWORKS back in the day. Now it's just a single click. You can go one side, you can go both directions, uh, you can make it symmetrical. I personally only ever, ever use one side, but hey, if you wanna go and create a model that's um, symmetrical, that's one easy way of doing it. And today I learned something. Now, when you're building your first one, you're only ever gonna see the operation new body selected on here and that's because we actually don't have any bodies in our model yet. If we had multiple bodies and I'll show you in a minute what that looks like, you have the option of drawing on a body and extruding from that body and combining it to be one big piece. So let's go and make a 10 millimeter hollowed out guy. Now you'll see a couple things. First of all we now have this kind of useless object and our sketch that we drew before has gone away. Now, it's not gone. That's the best thing is it's actually still here, but the system just assumes that when you extrude something, you might not want to be looking at it right away. So let's go and turn on the light bulb on sketch one, and there's our sketch back. 
So now let's go and extrude the text. So we'll select that and we can hit the E key to quick jump. And we can try and very, very slowly, uh, you know, this, this computer is a pretty fast one, but it's not the fastest. We can now go and extrude the text. So let's, uh, let's make our text five millimeters. We don't need it to be as tall as 10 and that can be its own body. Once we have created the text with the, the 3D extrusion, if you will, um, if you go over to bodies, you're going to see I actually have a lot of different bodies in here. And what this is, is each single letter of text has become a body. And the object that we created here is also a body. So the reason this is important is when you want to go and create a uh, 3D printed STL, you're going to only want to work with one body. If you have multiple bodies and they're all intertwined with each other, they won't slice properly. So you have to make sure your model is one solid piece. And that's what a body is in this case is one solid piece. Uh, Tag Daddy, I believe you can slice 2D sections. I just haven't needed to do that yet in my design work. Uh, for what it's worth, this product has an amazing amount of documentation out there. And even if you if you see, if we click down on any of these menu options and mouse over items, it goes and tells you about each feature and what it does. And you know, there's ones like threading that just create holes based off specifications. Um, there's all sorts of different cool little features you can do. So uh, split face, maybe that's uh, more what you're thinking of in the 2D section, or you can split bodies into two separate bodies. Um, there's tons of options in here. And basically the world is your oyster. I have yet to find a limitation to this product um, that prevented me from designing what I wanted to do. So to show you how powerful this is, let's, uh, let's go over to this side here. And let's say we want to do something fun to the side of this object. So if we go create sketch, now you remember we had these origin little points hidden down here, but we're not limited to that. We can actually draw right on this surface. So let's do that. Let's click there. And now we're creating a drawing on this surface. So what sort of things do we want to do to this? Let's go and say we want to add some text. And we can call it, let's see here. I always forget, I believe it saves in the, it goes from the bottom left up. Let's see if I'm right. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna have some giant, giant text here. Okay, TFL, you can actually rotate it too, but you know, let, let's just deal with that. Let's say we wanna move this. We can use the M key and then drag it around, kind of center it how we want on the object. So hit enter to commit that. Now we've got some text on the side of it. Now, why is that useful? Let's exit out of the sketch and let's go and select the sketch and do E for extrude. So we have a couple options here. We can make it come out of the side of the object, which is pretty awesome. We can also go inside the object and subtract it from the, from the base body. So by default, the software does switch back and forth, you know, trying to intelligently determine, eh, pardon me, determine if you want to extrude it or cut it. So now if we go and extrude outwards, you can see it's going to new body. Now that may just be because how I cut the model, but let's, let's just go and cut it. So where this is cool is we can actually go and cut all the way through pretty much everything. It's a very powerful tool. So if we do cut and do okay, now let's take a look at this. Now we've got the text cut right through the object on both sides and on this side, it's actually backwards. So that may not be the desired operation. Luckily, this tool uh, utilizes my favorite, con my favorite key in the whole world, Control Z, let's undo that. So let's go and extrude that and let's bring her back Oh, just inside, so it just does this one face. So now we have just this one face, and it's all hollowed out, and I am by no means saying this is a printable object. We are gonna be doing some terrible things to it here. <laughs> so, 
our next thing, let's say we want to go and create a, you know, what, what's something you guys normally do? If, if there's something that you've been trying to design and struggle with, let me know. Otherwise, we'll just experiment with some random things. So the first thing I would do personally um, is I love to use nuts and bolts on my prints. And one of my favorite things to do is embed a hole for the nut. So I'm just going to see. I don't think I have any nuts on this desk apart from myself. So we may just have to wing this. So bear with me here. Let's go and create on top of this box a new square. Now the great thing is, is because we're drawing on top of this, we can actually affix itself to all sorts of micro points all over this print. Personally, I'll just go corner to corner and create a new square over top of it. The next tool we're going to use is the polygon tool. Now we have two options here and this is this is going to be the big importance of how you measure it. We have uh, circumscribed polygons and inscribed polygons. So the circumscribed polygon goes from the center of the object all the way out to the flat edge of the polygon. So if you're thinking of a, I think the best way to show it would be to show it here. So if we go for an inscribed one, you can see the measurement is in relation from the center to the flat side of a hexagon. Now that also applies to triangles. It applies to uh, uh, pentagons. Uh, I'm trying to remember all my verbiage. So, <laughs> so let, let's go and uh, make this a hexagon, aka like a hex nut. Now this is nice because you can take your calipers and measure from one side to the other side and, and have a rough idea. When you're designing, always make sure to have a little extra tolerance because otherwise you're going to be filing to get that piece fitted. So let's say we have a six millimeter, uh, dia six millimeter diameter, let me say that a couple times, you'll get mixed up, uh, nut that we want to place inside the model. So we're going to place that there. Now we're going to exit the sketch and we're going to rotate around. And when you have closed faces, you'll see it highlights according. And basically, because I took that circle so tight, technically there is a micro, micro break in between these walls. If there was no break, it would select both sides automatically. So let's go and select this face. And we're going to hold down shift and make sure to select that little extra part so we have the whole top portion covered. We're going to hit extrude again. And this time, we're going to go up again another five millimeters, shall we say. Now, you can see by default, it's again going to new body, but we do not want it to be a new body. Otherwise, we're going to have some terrible, terrible printing issues. We are going to want to join and do OK. And now, body one, we'll, we'll turn off, we'll hide all these other letters in the background. How about that? Because that's getting a little distracting. You can light bulb them on and off and not have to look at them. How great is that? And let's turn off that sketch. Okay, so now we have our useless box with our text going through and we have this room for a nut. Now our next step, let's go and create a surface so it gets cut off. Again, we will create a new sketch atop the nut. We'll drag it across, create a 20 millimeter and now this time, let's, I'm going to try this because I actually haven't had to do this yet. So we are going to learn live if Brian is capable of using Fusion 360. I like to draw diagonal lines through boxes so I have a real nice center point I can always identify. It's just, just a force of habit, so you may not need to do this. We'll stop the sketch. We are going to select all these areas, including the one that was filled in. And we're going to extrude all that another, let's go 10 millimeters. Okay, so now we've got top layer. Actually, I think I did not select a, I did not select join on that. Yeah, I tried to create another new body. Shame on that tool. So let's join it to the existing body. Uh, let's go and bring that up. Now let's bring it up five millimeters. Taper angle, I haven't played with it much. Let's, let's see what happens if I do a 45 degree taper. Oh boy. Oh boy, yeah, you do not want to taper. But you, you can create tapers right from this tool. All right, so now we've joined her in. So 
this is a little bit tricky to see, but we still have our sketch in between. I find it's easier just to look from the bottom up. I want to try and use this thread tool. Okay, so the faces, it's going to go through. Let's see here. Okay, it has to be, so the, the hole already has to be created. Let, let, let's create a hole and see if this works. So we're going we're gonna to create a new sketch on this plane here. We're going to create a circle that's, oh, what's a good size? 3.5 millimeters? You guys like metric screws, right? I know I do. So let's take that and let's extrude that and we're going to cut. No bodies found. What did I do with this thing? Oh, it's probably because I'm in the sketch. There we go. Make sure to exit your sketches if you're having issues. So let's go and take our circle and we're gonna extrude upwards to create a hole, okay? You can go way past the object, and I honestly always do, and go like that. Okay, so now we have a hole. And that's not very useful for screws because with screws, if they're not the right size, they'll pass through. And if you're anything like me, you'll engineer your hole a bit smaller so you just jam the screw in and create your own threads. But that's not the proper way of doing things. So let's go to modify and oh, sorry, create thread. Okay, so we're gonna hit this hole. Now, the, oh, that is so cool. <laughs> so we now have the ability within that hole to create a thread. And oh, no way, look at this. You can actually select what size hole you want it to be and what your designation is for your screws, for your profile. You can go between every thread type in the book. Oh, I love this. Okay, so um, let's go with a um, M4. And that's a good question. I don't know what the default. You guys tell me, what, what's the default thread size for uh, screws that you buy these days? Is M5 or M4 by 0.7 or M4 by 0.5? Let's see here. I'm, I'm going to assume, well, I'm not going to be printing this really and trying to make it work. So let's just assume M4.7. Now that is cool. Uh, you can actually make it remember the size if you plan on using that across your part everywhere. So yeah, why not? Let's do that. Okay, and then do OK. And then a minute later, I assume, yep, it slices it up and creates all your threading for your 3D printer to print. That way your bolt will fit. Uh, fit in the, there. That is cool. Okay. This is, again, another feature that I have never seen in another free product. So um, with this amount of ease, you can develop pretty much anything you want. But, you know, I'll, I'll show you a couple tools I learned this weekend because, honestly, I do not like designing linear things apart from parts. I do like designing creative things. So um, let's do something cool here. Let's, let's say we want to do something with this face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch on here, and I'm going to go and split it up. I, I kind of want to access this midway. So we go and draw a box, and you can see the little triangle up there so I know it's midway across it. And we'll exit the sketch. We'll take that face. Let's see here. There we go. And we will bring it out a few millimeters. This is probably not the best way of doing things, but this is how I like to cheat. <laughs> so we are going to create a new sketch on this plane. And let's create a way wacky wonky line. How about that? Let's create a tangent. Uh, let, let's start off with something simple. Let's start off with a center point arc. Those create circles, so we know it'll look clean. So you select between two points, and you can draw an arc. Um, that may not be the best for this application, actually. Let, let's go with a three-point arc. That one's simple. Take two points, and then you can go and choose how you want it to arc between those points. Uh, there's no, there's not always a happy angle. There are ways you can tie it to other points, but let, let's do something fun here. Let's, let's go from there to there. Uh, come on, give me, give me something to tie to. I'm, I'm a grid monkey. I love doing that. Okay. And then we'll zoom out way out and we'll create an arm that goes like that. Now, by this point, you must realize I'm creating something that's 
not printable. So, you know, bear that in mind. This doesn't just magically make printable physics work. Okay, so we are going to exit the sketch. And now we've got this wacky crazy line out here. Let's go now and extrude this back to this wall. Now, what if we don't know the exact measurement from, from where it is right now all the way back? Well, Fusion's got some amazing sort of alignment tools in it. So my favorite one is you click on your face you want it to go to, or the face that you want to extrude, and then click on the back face. And then it should go and cut it back so it'll be flat with that face, which is 10 millimeters, which it was. So let's chop her in there. And now we've got it a complete boring flat wall back here. And we got this wacky line. Now, what would we use that line for? There's a couple of things. My favorite feature is the, what do they call it here? The sweep. So sweep is like making a snake out of an object. You go and create a 2D sketch. You create a line that comes out of it perpendicular and it will go and make the object follow that line with its same shape. So what does that look like? If we click on the sweep tool, profile is your sketch. In this case, it's just this wall. The path is our wacky crazy line. And if we zoom out here, now we can see it follows that line, maintaining the measurements. So it's always that face size. It just follows the line to that profile point. So if you ever wanted to create tubes that wrap around something, or obscure objects, uh, you can do it with this. Another um, cool tool with that is if we go and, let's see if we can do this nice here. Let's create another, uh, how, how do I wanna do this? Honestly, there's not always an easy way of doing things. So you, you have to be a bit creative. I'm sure there's 50 million ways to do something like this, but let, let's keep it simple here. So let's create, a uh, three-point arc that goes from this point up to, let's say this point. I wanna keep it on here so I can easily add a sketch to that origin point. So now we have this little guy floating out here and we're gonna create another sketch and we know that that's going to line up there. So let's say up here we want a circle. Let's make a, how about a tiny little circle? How about that? As a, as Bob Ross would say, a, a happy little circle. We're gonna put a happy little four millimeter circle in the sky. So now we got this happy little four millimeter circle in the sky, and we want to get the box. We want to get up to that happy little circle. So, we're gonna use this amazing tool that I finally learned how to use this weekend, the loft tool, and literally it creates geometry to shape shift from your first sketch to your second sketch. So we're gonna hit the loft tool. And you can see we have this profile one from the first one. We're gonna change the guide type over to center line and we're gonna click the plus and the arc. Now we're gonna go back up to the profiles and we're gonna click the plus and we're gonna click the circle. And look at that. Oh, <laughs> so you can create all sorts of cool geometry warping from one shape to another. I absolutely love this tool. <laughs> so, you know, things just to be aware, if you're trying to create complex and unique geometry, you want to kind of save this to the end because trying to back work on this stuff is not very fun. You know, get, get your geometry in place and build that. So looking at this, actually, I think this is almost printable. So let's, uh, let's, uh, let's do okay, join it. We're gonna have this one big giant body here and let's say we want to print it uh, I'm gonna first of all say you know save your work in this product because if your product crashes or anything like that not that it happens often for me but it does happen um, it all saves it to the cloud and you want to make sure to pull it up later since it does save to the cloud though you can go and pull this model up on any computer that you have fusion installed you just have to go and install uh, install it, sign in with the same account, and have the system requirements to run it. 
Um, it also does have a mobile app, so you can actually sign in and show people your models um, on your phone in full 3D. So, you know, kind of some cool features. I know people are against the cloud, and I'm kind of against it too, uh, just because you can't back up the entire project locally. Uh, but it does have some nice features, given that it is completely free. So, we've got this gorgeous, gorgeous useless box with a screw that holds nothing in place. So let's say we want to print this thing. Now, what you want to do is select your body that you want to go and send to the tool. You can also um, select this at the end, but it just makes it easier um, for now to make sure you're exporting the right thing. Go up to the Make dialog, and by default it says 3D Print. That's kind of handy to know. So let's click that. The 3D Print dialog will show you selection. Um, it's pre-selected what we want to do. Uh, preview mesh doesn't always work, but the main thing you want to see, because this dialog will not work, is you want to uncheck send a 3D print utility. Um, I guess you can send it right into Cura. I've never actually done this. I prefer to export all my STLs. So let's go and uncheck that. Okay, let's turn this off and on. There we go. This time it might actually work. And this might, this will take a moment even on this computer, because uh, this is like a GTX 1070 and Ryzen processor, but you'll see in just a moment here, look at this geometry. Look at all those triangles. It had to figure out all those and route it out. That's why you don't always want to go and turn on preview meshes, because you might hang waiting for it to show you. But this is what the STL basically is going to be on the inside. And you can see, because I did this complex geometry here, we've got 22,962 triangles. So this is not exactly designed to go to your uh, game, or your Unity engine, or anything like that. It'll probably crash a lot of low-end uh, GPUs. But when we're designing and doing 3D printing, you want more polygons because you want more detail. So let's turn off Preview Mesh for now. Um, let's do OK. It's going to ask, where do we want to save it? Now you can see I've got a lot of old STLs here on the desktop. And it saves it as the name of your body that you have selected. So you know that you haven't selected multiple bodies or confused things. It's just one way to help it. So let's hit save. Now we got that. And we're going to go and load up Cura here. And... Uh, well, this spins up. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to throw them ahead in the chat there. You know, any super chats or anything, we definitely appreciate. And uh, if you get a chance, uh, give us a thumbs up. Or if you really hate this, if you want Rich back, uh, give me give me a thumbs down. And I'll I'll take the I'll take the heat there, and I'll look at the stats there and say, oh, that was that was my Saturday, wasn't it? Uh, ring that notification bell, let you know when new content comes out, and uh, be sure to subscribe. We love uh, all of our subscribers. We still have hashtag year of the maker going on for a couple more days i believe here i think it was the 22nd we said we're ending it so if you may leave a comment in the video below of uh, hashtag year of the maker uh you could be entered to win a pretty awesome toolbox there unfortunately only canada and the u.s because that's the way of things out here it's just getting too expensive and uh as with things being too expensive apparently new pc parts because <laughs> look at this thing crawl uh, we're just going to wait for Cura to start responding again. Th this is my PC with the weird issues, so um, we, we have some bugs sometime. So, now we have uh, Ultimate Cura loaded up. You can use Simplify 3D or whatever product you want there. We'll go File, Open File, and we'll find that new Body 15. And would you look at that? It is right there. It is to scale. I'm just trying to remember all my Cura hotkeys here because I normally work on my laptop for my one printer. And actually, this doesn't look overly not printable. Um, I would probably advise to turn it on its side at least, but we could at least try and uh, build, it, build it up here. Uh, let's see what we've got for a layer view here. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is... That's not cool. Oh, that's because those walls are so thin. So, basically, when we designed this, uh, because we didn't give much room on the letters on the inside, you can see the profile of the F. 
right? Kira with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle is doing its best to try and make those letters inset there. But just simply put, I don't have single wall extrusions turned on. It's just too thin. But that's that's okay. It's just a cosmetic thing, right? So now the question is, what do you guys think? Should I try and put this on my Ender 3? Uh, it does say an hour and 38 minutes, so it would not be completed at the uh, at the end of today's broadcast. But if you want me to print it, you know, give me a thumbs up. Uh, you know, give some love here because uh, filament is about double the price in Canada. <laughs> it's what it is in the U.S. So, sorry. <laughs> um, now this this was supposed to be TFL call for help tonight. Um, I, again, I was uh, hoping Richard would be here, but uh, unfortunately due to his emergency, he couldn't. So. I'm still here to answer questions, whether or not you want to hear my advice. So if you do have those questions, throw it up in the chat, or even if there's something here, Fusion 360, you've been struggling with, um, let me know. So uh, yeah, I'm going to open up the floor to whatever questions, you know, I, I, I'm pretty much low on content. Uh, uh, the last 20 minutes here, let's say, which shall be your time. So uh, let me know. I suppose uh, while we wait for questions to come in here, I can show you some of my other Fusion 360 designs, uh, one of which is uh, one I've been doing for a friend today, uh, a cosplayer, who is going to be cosplaying as Andrea from the T Canadian TV hit series, I'm going to call it that, a uh, reboot from the 1990s. And one of the items I developed for her was Andrea's icon earlier today. So... If we pull up the icon here in Fusion 360, eventually it'll, you know, it has to pull it from the cloud because I was designing Pre's the relaunch view icon. It needs the latest update. Oh, look at that. I need a new update. Okay, let's not do that. Let's go look at something that wasn't performed on that latest update. Let's go look at the Elmer glue stick holder. There's something cool I've done. So let's see if this one will pull up or if it's going to scream at me. Okay, so here is a glue stick holder I designed for the CR10. I don't believe I put this one on Thingiverse, but I can at people's request. And it's just quite simply a holder that goes, uh, you just screw a single M3 into the 2020 extrusion with a T-nut and it locks right in. So yeah, simple little design. Um, one of the things you can see I've done on this is I actually chamfered the edges to help guide in the uh, guide in the glue stick so they're not all sharp edges. Um, that's one uh, one of two tools I didn't really show tonight, uh, which is the uh, fillet and chamfer tools, um, and it, they are just godly. So all you have to do is let's say we want to select the chamfer you select any outside line and you can actually drag it um, to the extents of what the software will allow to create by default a 45 degree chamfer. You can actually also make it do uh, distance and angle if you want to play with the angle at which it chamfers as you can see or you can do two distances if you know the measurement of the chamfer in each angle you want to do. So it's a very powerful tool. Uh, I see some questions coming in here. Um, how would you helix an object? Well, <laughs> I don't claim to be a designer. Um, let, let me. Uh, can you can you elaborate on how you, how you'd want to helix something? I I'm going to quickly Google that. Uh, a helix angle. Hang on here. I'm I'm a little bit rusty on my design stuff. So. Um, Anytime, you, you can just Google up the tool, and uh, believe it or not, uh, Autodesk actually provides some great video tutorials on using each of these tools. That's how I've learned while kind of going along. Um, system specs, this computer is a Ryzen um, 1700 with 16 gigs of RAM and a GTX 1070 I bought at Micro Center in Houston when I visited. So. Um, it's a pretty decent machine. I just think I have a lot of random old hardware hooked up to this machine. I've got a Brother Label Maker, a Focusrite Scarlet Capture System. I've got various little uh, Matrox boxes. So there's probably some kind of driver conflict that's causing the issues, that's causing her to seize up. It's just, 
it's really getting to the point of um, extremely difficult to diagnose where I don't want to reformat this machine because it's older than, well, it's migrated through probably four OSs now across builds, but I know I probably should. Uh, well, I have it in hand. I thought I had it in here. It was just hiding on me. Uh, here is the Andrea icon I 3D printed today. Um, this I uh, spun up in Fusion 360 there in a few minutes. And yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, pretty fantastic how accurate it came out, to be honest, given that I didn't measure anything. Uh, does software work on Apple Mac ProBook? Yes, as I'm not a Mac user, but uh, it is Windows and Mac. Unfortunately, it's not Linux. I understand why it's not Linux. Um, it's it's just the nature of these uh, graphics drivers because these products are designed for um, industrial software such a, or industrial hardware such as the Quadro GPU line from Nvidia and uh, Intel CPUs. They really don't. AMD is not really considered an industrial CPU yet, shall we say? Um, so, yeah, it's unfortunate that it's not out on Linux, but Windows and Mac is pretty good compatibility. Um, Tag Daddy, I'm running 16, 16 gigs of RAM on this machine, and it's uh, it's only at yeah, it's at 64% usage right now, so it's not overly through the roof. Uh, Nathan Christensen, if you're going to take a cube or whatever and have the opposing faces 45 degrees off of each other, so you want to go and have the opposing face 45. Can you elaborate? Like, do you want to make make it a diamond or do you want to make something cut off it like you want to draw, take a drawing and cut off 45 degrees uh, there's a couple different ways we can do that uh, what I would do personally is well, let's see if I can let's see if I can per you know I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of the text in the background but I'm gonna keep this this hideous object there <laughs> let's turn off all that uh, oh twisting the object so if you want to go and twist it uh, what we can do is if we create down here a new square, let's make this one 10 by 10. And let's stop the sketch. What I like to do sometimes, I really do like to cheat with this, is uh, I like to use the extrusion to build a platform for another sketch and then I get rid of the extrusion. So let's say we've gone up here now and we want to create on that surface a new sketch and we're going to take a, another square and we're going to select that square and we're going to rotate it you use the move copy dialog for everything in this don't ask me why that is but uh, let's let's move this at and everything is measurable in this tool Ugh, that's not the 45 I wanted and that's not the 45 I wanted, so it's got to be this is the 40. Oof, no, that is not the 45 I wanted. <laughs> so, uh, let's select these uh, objects within the sketch. And let's rotate. Now, what does it rotate relative to? You know what, that's no fun. Let's just, let's keep it simple. Let's, uh, let's use our uh, inscribe polygon tool. And we'll start... Let's see, well, let me do relative to the center. There we go. Um, and it's only going to have four faces, so then it's got to be got to be a diamond. So let's make this uh, five millimeters at, uh, let's see, does it let me type in 45? I don't think, I don't think it's letting me do 45. Okay. Well, let's eyeball it for now. Let, let's just eyeball it. All right. So now we've got this new sketch. And this new body that we just created, we, we don't need this anymore, right? So let's delete that body. And let's show the last two sketches. Oh, wow, look at that. I, I still even have a planar face in there. So let's delete that junk, too. Nope. Okay, we're going to keep it. So what you can do is if you go and select that body down there and do your modify, let's see if we can actually make this sweep without a path we can. So if we select all these sides, now we've got a twist. So so you can helix um, by doing it that way. That's obviously probably going to be the wrong way of doing it. But uh, let's let's all learn together. Let's see 
if uh, if they have a good video demo on how to helix. But I don't I don't think they've got a built-in tool just to do that, unless um, unless the extrude has an option for that. No, this only um, yeah this only gives us distance and uh, and all that. So extrusion is only meant to go one way. Uh, what else we got here? We've got shell, so you can hollow out a shell on the inside. Replace face. That's a pretty cool looking tool. Um, man, physics. Okay, so there's a whole other side of this product uh, product for simulation that I have not touched yet. But if you're designing something and you want to see the ten tensile strength of something, from what I've seen, this system has the power to do that. So. Um, that's why I'm saying I'm blown away that this thing is completely free. Let's see here. We got web. We've got... Okay, revolve is one I got to show you guys. This thing is... This is one another one of my favorites. So, let's go and get rid of this guy. We're going to create... We're going to create a little rocket ship together. How about that? So, let's go and create a sketch on the top-down view. And I'm going to draw to my best of terrible sketching ability here a little rocket of some sort. So uh, let's let's start off with the engines. Let's create a three-point arc. Kind of round it off a little bit there so it doesn't look completely budget. You know, this is not uh, not your backyard project. And then let's uh, let's attach it to the body with a little little tiny hose how about that so from there we're gonna have a shell that goes way way up let's do it to there and I'll create a crummy nose cone okay so now we've got this terrible profile so what do we want to do we want to spin it so let's exit out of the sketch and let's go to modify, or sorry, create and revolve. Now we're going to select all of our little triangles in here. And the axis, we want it to rotate on this, this line here. So on its center line. So what it does is it extrudes around that point, And you can define the number of degrees. By default, we want it to go all the way around. Uh, we can go 180 degrees if we only want half of it. We can go partial angles if we only want little bits. But let's say we want the whole thing. Let's let's go 360 degrees. So where this is nice is, you know, we've created this little silhouette profile of this. But, you know, we like to make it a little bit smoother. So we can use the three-point arc tool again inside. If you double-click on a sketch, it'll take you back into it so you don't have to look at all your other geometry. But let's go and curve that a little bit because we're not going to want to extrude that ugly part. Or, um, I'm sorry, revolve that part. And now we'll go and run the revolve tool again. You can also select things, but you know, I always find that I select more geometry than I want. So just bear that in mind. I, that's why I just shift click everything. So now let's go to our create revolve. And it's funny too, you can actually go and revolve around anything. If we want to revolve on this outside line, it'll try, but it'll scream a little bit. Uh, if you want to go based off um, a line like at the bottom here, you, you can sometimes do that. In the case of this geometry, it's just not compatible. Uh, or maybe it is, no, no, it's not. So we know that all the geometry touches this one line. And now we have what essentially, once it finishes calculating, looks like some kind of deranged bullet <laughs> so one tool I have not um, found yet um, is the one to, that SolidWorks has that allows you to drop um, profiles all the way around so if let's say if we wanted to uh, edit this last sketch and add a add a fin of some sort I can go and extrude that fin but I still haven't quite figured out how to allow that to go all the way around. So we can go and say symmetrical one, what does one millimeter look like on each side? 
that is giant. So let's go with uh, 0 0.2. That's a little thin. 0 0.4. And right now, by default, it's creating a new body. Now, that's not always a bad thing because we don't always want it to blend in with the main body. Yeah, circular pattern short. Um, uh, let me just see if I think there's a way to... Oh, there it is. <laughs> circular pattern. Okay, so... We're going to take bodies and we're going to create our new wing here and our axis um, easiest in a way would be if I hide the bodies now that's not a phrase you don't want to hear every night if I click on that center line within that sketch now we have uh, we have three wings but let's say we want to have four wings or five wings or six or seven and I think it'll let you keep going until it runs out of room. I don't know. So we can have, let's have 10 wings on this thing because we're making some kind of Kerbal Space Program ro uh, rocket. Oh, look at that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I love Fusion 360. <laughs> um, what kind of tools have you guys uh, been trying to develop lately? Uh, have you been tr trying to make tools, parts, uh, what, what's been your design design features you've been trying to make? Let me know in the comments, and uh, maybe uh, maybe we can help you out tonight. So that wow, that is way more powerful. You know, here you go. I'm I'm a pretty I, w I won't call myself an experienced designer, but I'm not. You know, I've played around with the products for several years, and I wasn't aware that you could do this much in the free product because at some point Autodesk has to say you should really go over and start using SolidWorks for that low low price of four thousand dollars a year you can do all this I still haven't found a reason to leave Fusion 360 hey I see countries in here tonight how's it going bud uh, we're just we're having a heck of a fun time of Fusion 360 I'm learning I hope all of you are learning give me a thumbs up and you know if if you do want to have a, a series that goes into more detail of each of these tools, let me know in the comments. Um, join our Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash the first layer. And uh, let me know what, uh, what kind of video series on Fusion that you'd like to see and what problems uh, you're hoping it can solve for you. Because I'll be honest, I've done so much design work lately in Fusion 360 that I never would have done, to be honest. Even with SolidWorks, I've got it for free right now. And... I opened it up and I said to myself, this is not the SolidWorks I worked with back in, oh, 2009, 2010. So, yeah, Fusion 360 is actually closer to what I knew solid for SolidWorks. You know, this is actually kind of cool. I might actually have to 3D print this. But if I would, if I were to, I would take all these faces... I would actually, you know, I would probably undo that, undo that, and extend this somehow to the ground. So you can, you can do that. It will lock. You can actually see little double lines there at the top, or on the, on the line up here, indicating that it's actually perpendicular to that point. So sometimes I draw some extra lines just as another locking point. We can do that. We can go and keep that angle. And let's go with a uh, sharper angle so that, eh, you know, we'll leave it a little room so it actually could print. All right, let's exit that sketch. Let's take all those cool new faces. Let's extrude them on two sides for two, nope, definitely not two millimeters. That's going to be giant. Oh, let's, let's get the faces inside the model. How about that? Oh, maybe it, maybe it won't suck those. Okay, that's that's quite all right. Let's extrude. Two uh, symmetrical. Zero point four millimeters. And where all these little extra tools are powerful, is uh, we can go and make all these customizations before we duplicate a boatload of times. So let's let's go and let's go fill at these edges. So we're going to round off these edges a little bit. Look at that. Round it right off. 
And of course, I'm just eyeballing all this because that's it's way more fun to eyeball things, right? Um, corner type, I've never used anything other than rolling ball, so because it's all cosmetic for me. And let's take this, let's take these two edges and round those off as well. Now, luckily, I remembered from the last one that it was 0 0.4 millimeters. I can guarantee most of that quality won't show up because we use 0.4 millimeter nozzles. Okay, so we've got our new wing. Now we're going to do the create pattern, circular pattern. We're going to hide the other body. We're going to select uh, the axis to be the center. Okay, let's turn back on the body to see how it looks. There's our tri wing. Let's make her 10 because I said I wanted to kerbal this thing. All right, now look at that. That's actually a pretty cool looking little rocket, if I do say so myself. Now, remember how I told you earlier how this would not print properly because um, it's multiple bodies? L let me show you what will happen when you do that. So, if we select all these bodies and we go to export the STL, is it not even going to let me do it? Oh, that's right. Yeah, because this product by default will allow you to put out um, basically a singular object. So you can cheat that by selecting the project at the top. And sometimes it will, it, there you go, it will let us export it. Now we still have our ugly hidden object from behind. Let's, uh, let's bring this poor thing into Cura and see what happens. Okay, so we brought it into Cura, it automatically did the slicing, and actually with this one I might actually be almost okay, but if you zoom right in here you're going to see the geometries are not actually connected, it's just floating. So there's no guarantee that's actually going to weld nicely with your part. So to get over that, if, you're, if you know for sure your model, the way it looks is how you want it to print, you can actually go and select all of your bodies and you can combine them all into a solid part. Now, once you've done this, there's no going back, okay? Um, I shouldn't say there's no going back, you can control Z. But if your intention is to go and modify that original object before you duplicated it like 10 times, it's not gonna be easy. So if we combine it, we're gonna have now a singular body. Let's make that singular body into a new STL. Let's, you know, we'll keep this one on here. Maybe we can actually see the differences side by side. Let's open up body 18 and slice away. Well, you know what? In this case, there actually wasn't really a, a problem. The, basically, the issue was when I designed this, um, I didn't really create a connecting wall between the circle and those floating guys. They're, they're just very, very close. So I, I'd say there's a chance this would weld. Okay. Um, you should have filleted the side of the wings as well. Yeah, I, you know, let's do that. Let, let's make it. Let's fillet the edges and fill it. I'm going to, what did I tell you? I had food on the mind. We're going to fillet the edges. All right. So let's uh, zoom in. Now, this thing's all one big object now, right? So we can actually go and we can fill it, hopefully, if it allows me. The geometry may not be compatible. Uh, let's see. Okay, it's only, it wants me to go inside, but I don't think it can. Um, it's a bit of a picky tool. Um, same thing with the chamfer. I may actually be able to chamfer it, but there's no real guarantee. Um, let's see here, will it let me do it? No, it, it's because of the curve. Um, I might actually be able to do it if I select both sides of it. Uh, no, non-manifold edge or vertexes. So it didn't um, didn't really bind very well. I think there's a way I can change it over to... Hey, can I change it over to a wireframe easy? No. Uh, if someone knows how to use the wireframe tool, uh, great, let me know. <laughs> I guess I'm a little rusty on this. Um, we can make this thing look pretty, at least in Fusion 360, if you want to show it off to somebody. So if you right-click on a body, you can click on Appearance. 
and you get this cool dialogue where you can actually download tons of different material types uh, that Autodesk has created. So we can make this glass. And now it looks like glass. Now it may not look very good as glass in this view, but that's because it's not trying to render it to be photorealistic right now, otherwise your PC will melt. What happens when your PC melts? This is what happens. We go to the render, we get cool shadows, and if we hit the in canvas render, it's going to choke up and it's actually going to render this thing as glass. How cool is that? Um, you can do pretty much any sort of material one. They do have a per credit. I don't know how the credits work, but you can actually pay to have it rendered in the cloud on their services instead of on your local machine. So if you want to show off a cool part to somebody and you don't have a top of the line PC and you don't want to wait eight hours sometimes for it to render, you can um, farm it off to the cloud and it will render a very high detailed JPEG of sorts. And as you can see, it does glass, it does a bunch of materials. Ironically, it doesn't do a lot of PLA, it doesn't do a lot of ABS uh, because those materials are kind of flat, but it has wood textures, you can import your own, etc., etc. Now, there's one final thing I wanted to show you in Fusion tonight, uh, if you are intimidated about uh, working on these items. Uh, basically, you have to think about how do you want to sketch out a part. You know, this is designed for measurement accurate things. If you want to do an artistic creation, there are simply better products out there. But if your measurements have to be accurate, this is the program you want to use. So let's hide our rocket ship. Let's hide all these other sketches for now. And let's just create, let's just say we want to use something as a basis for an image. So I'm going to quickly hop on to um, our Facebook group, which I'll, I'll post in the chat here if you haven't had a chance to hop on over and uh, join the party. Um, we're going to go and take our logo and we're going to bring it into Fusion 360 because you may not know the measurement data. So let's see, where, where, oh, where is my, has my little logo gone? Where, oh, where can it be? I know where I can find it on our YouTube page. And while I'm there, I'll make sure I'm subscribed. <laughs> okay. So let's pull up our logo here. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to save a copy of it somewhere. Uh, where is, where is some room on this computer? Desktop. Everything can always go on the desktop. You can scrutinize me later for it. All right. So you can actually insert drawings and photos right into here and basically trace over top of it. So, you know, yes, I have this nice digital caliper, but I might also just have a ruler on hand. You know, I just bought this giant 300 millimeter caliper, but I probably could have gotten away with a measurement ruler and a photo. So what we want to do is we're going to go into insert and we're going to insert an attached canvas. Uh, we're going to choose the bottom face because I like to draw from the bottom and bring it up and select image. We're going to go and take photo. So here we have the first layer logo. And if you need to, you basically need to figure out how to scale it properly, or you can blow it up to the correct size once you've started sketching. But for now, we're going to take this logo and let's say it's good enough. You can change the opacity. So if it's too bright or too dark, um, and if you can't see your sketch lines, you can change that. 50% is usually good enough for me. And you can change all your scaling, but we're going to go and drop it like that. Next, we're going to create a sketch on this canvas, or rather on the plane. The canvas is just an invisible thing that you can actually turn on and off, and you can place them anywhere on the drawing. But for now, since we have nothing in here, we'll just work with this. So let's say we want to recreate this in 3D. First thing we'll do is we know we have a hexagon. And I assume going from the center, I can either go inscribed or circumscribed. So let's go with circumscribed here and we'll drag it to, oh, that's actually a pretty, pretty good eyeball of it. But you know, let's go a little bigger because I, I like snap to grid, I like lockable sizes. So we'll drop our first um, hexagon there 
We're going to drop our next hexagon there, and you know, we'll just use this as a reference. So next we'll draw a line. Uh, let's, let's just make it floating in space. And next we will, let's create, let's go and use the center point arc tool. So we'll start with the center here, go to there, and we want it to be 180 degrees. Now again, this is, you know, it's we're just eyeballing it in this case, but uh, this tool, you'll go from the center to the outside and then choose how many degrees to go around that point, in which case we always want 180 degrees. Now there's no guarantee these lines are going to line up right now because that's just me being tacky with it. Let's... Um, I'm sure there's a hotkey to like reuse the last tool. I haven't learned it yet, so <laughs> you'll have to bear with me there on that one. Okay, so that to there, that to there, and then this one to there. Okay, then we're going to create some lines. We're going to create another line. We're going to create another line. That one's real crooked. We're going to create another line. Another line, and to there. Okay, next we're gonna draw around here. So line, by default the line tool will just keep going. You can always hit escape to exit out of that. Line, line, okay. And then, oops. Line, that one's gonna be a little off, that's okay. And line, now, why am I just doing lines of these? Well, we're going to use that cool, uh, we're going to use that cool path tool. Uh, what do they call it here? The, uh, the sweep. We're going to use the sweep to to create a frame around this. So next, we're going to go and have a couple of curved lines. So we're going to need our three point arc. I find it's just easiest to go here and do something like that. I'd say that's pretty close. What do you guys say? So now we have this. Let's exit out of our sketch. We are then going to take our inner and outer frames and all this and we're going to extrude that. Let's make it, oh we don't want five millimeters, let's make it one millimeter on, uh, actually you know we'll make it thinner than that because the snake lines around it are going to be super thin. We'll just do 0.1 millimeter. Nice thin little extruded guy. Now if we turn off the canvas you'll see that's what we got. Okay, so the next item we're going to want to do is we're going to turn our sketch back on where we drew this. And now we need to create um, we need to create a sketch at this point. So let's see, can I do it relative to that? Oops. Didn't mean to create a sketch there. What's it showing me here? Okay, can I create a sketch? No, it wants to create the sketch on the face. Hey, Minnesota Maker, welcome tonight. Okay, so what I would do, because again, I want to cheat this a little bit, is at the beginning of this line here that I want to trace around, got to zoom out and then zoom in. That's easier than me transitioning all over the place here. Um, let's go and let's see, it's sketch 12 we want to edit, right? Okay, let's edit sketch 12. And let's create a line that goes from here up to here a little bit. And we'll create a box that goes right about that. Actually, you know, while we're at it, let's let's do all the other ones too. So let's go and create. Actually, we can we can eyeball it from the center point from there, right? So let's do that. That and then zoom out. Let's do one on this guy and one on this guy. Actually, yep, perfect. Okay, so now we got some cheater boxes, as I call them. Now we got the cheater boxes. We're gonna go and extrude a little bit up here, just so we have a face that we can draw on for our little path. So let's create a new sketch on Go away, sketch. Why 
maybe not let me create a sketch on there. There we go. Now we're gonna create a circle on here. Wow, look at look at that frame rate hurting. Whew. Okay, we're gonna create it at 0 0.5. No, it seems large. Let's do 0 0.2. Okay. We're gonna go stop the sketch. And we're gonna go home. Now we've got this little guy. Let's hide our cheater block. Let's go create a sweep. It's not the path I want, I want that profile. There we go. Okay, and the path is gonna be this guy. Can it resolve that? The path is tangent to the profile. Try adjusting or rotating the profile. Huh. Oh, did I? Hmm. I am not sure why it's not letting me do that. This is the joys of learning fusion. Is that sometimes it doesn't work out how you want it to. Oh, it wants to go that way. Why does it want to go that way? See, I thought perpendicular would have been the opposite way. I could have screwed that up. But um, you can make it sweep along that path. The point is, is that we now have um, an outline, basically, of our logo. So we can... We could even just extrude everything here. And let's bring it two sides, 1.5 millimeters. And then we can actually take the, uh, the other objects there. And we can extrude that up and make it 2.5 on two sides. And this is how I did the icon earlier, was I just sketched over top of something and created a logo. Now, when all said and done, you'll just have an exportable, uh, exportable design. Uh, Ian hopes you could have just created a plane for the sketch; would have saved a couple of steps. Probably, uh, as I said, there are definitely better ways of doing some of this stuff. But you know, that's half the fun of learning this, and I'd love to share knowledge with anyone who uh, who does know some tips and tricks that I clearly haven't shown tonight. But uh, if you did get something out of tonight, you know, give us a thumbs up like share subscribe all that and hopefully in the next coming months i'll be able to provide some more video content and tutorials on this software um but uh you know for the time being thanks for joining me tonight guys and i appreciate it and i appreciate all the uh you, all 28 of you hanging around and uh, keeping me company as i as i fly this by the seat of my pants you know it's just it's a saturday night and i hope you guys all have some fun plans for the rest of the weekend I'm going to go print that, that hideous cube, and hopefully I will be able to post by tomorrow the, uh, the results at the Facebook group. So join us over at facebook.com slash group slash the first layer. And remember that uh, the first layer is your foundation for a better print. Take care, all.